We'll do a video today to show you how to remove your instrument cluster, your speedo instrument panel on your Range Rover Sport 2005, um, which should be pretty much the same until 2009. Um, right, a uh, couple of things before we start. If you're going to change your speed or you've got a fault with these instruments, be very careful. They're coded together. I believe the LCM, one of the other modules, and the instrument cluster are all coded together. And if you change one of them um, and not the others as a set, um, you get into trouble because apparently the Speedo cluster contains the CCF files which are the configuration files for your car. Right, so first thing we're going to do, we've got Tom round here has made a start already, we're just going to disconnect the battery. So yeah, when you're disconnecting the battery, disconnect the earth, remove the cover and you want to tuck that out the way somewhere so that hopefully then the car won't be aware, be blissfully unaware that we've uh, disconnected the speedo and that it's, it's, uh, it won't flag up any errors. We hope we haven't actually done this yet. Right, now Tom's done this and he's going to talk me through it a little bit. Um, he assures me it's not too hard. I've been busy on something else this morning. Um, right, so the first thing we're going to do, is we start the steering wheel up or let's go that up, shall we Tom? Yeah. Steering wheel up and then we've got to remove this lower panel first, which unclips from the top, right Tom? That's correct. Okay, so we've got these metal clips here. They may ping off. Okay, so we've got those two out there. And then once you lower it down, you can just pull out these little locating. So that effectively a hinge. It's a, a dog. I don't know what the proper name for that is. So we're going to chuck that in the back. Right then, next we go for this end panel, Tom. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So this should, Tom assures me, just pull off. So we're going to grab it on the side here and just pull it. Now you may have heard on the video the little pling noise of the metal clips. So what? So we should have these metal clips here. So if we have a look here, Tom. So we've got this metal clip here. So it looks like we should have one, two, and that looks like he's the pling culprit, three. And is there one on there, Tom? No. <coughs> no, so we should have three metal clips. So I'm sure we'll discover it in a minute, but one of our metal clips has had a little Oh, there he is. He's had a little trip down in there, so we'll put him back on. Right, and which will do the job. You could just nip that up with some pliers before you put him back on. Should we disconnect? We'll disconnect that and have that out of the way, shall we, Tom? So we push in the little lock bit in there. Give it a oh, give it a pull out. And again, that's foolproof. You can only put that back on one way. So that's the light switch assembly removed. Okay, so place that carefully in the back. Now, I believe the next bit is to do this other side here. Okay, so we'll try and video this, but and, um, it's pretty much the same process. Oh, feels like you're wrecking your car. Uh, but luckily I'm wrecking my car first for you. So, uh, panel, no electrical connections. Obviously we're doing this on a right-hand drive vehicle. A left-hand drive one will be different, but I'm pretty sure it'll be pretty much the same concept. So again, we've got four of these clips here. We have got these clips on our website, I think, so if you lose them. They're quite extensively used on the Range Rover Sport interior. Um, right, okay, so that's that panel moved. Now, right. Okay, now what we're trying to get at, by the way, is there's two screws that are at the bottom here that we can't see. And it's only the two screws that hold this instrument cluster in. So we're sort of trying to disassemble the area around it just to access those two screws. Now, the next thing is to lower the steering wheel all the way down. Is that a good idea next time? No, not no, yet. Not yet. I've got ahead of myself, have I? So, maybe two screws for you. Uh, Right, we're supposed to have two screws. These were missing from our car, which is a little bit worrying. We'll put some back in in a minute. There should be one there, I'm guessing. One here, okay? So those two screws there you will need to remove, and they'll probably be a Torx T20. Um, right, what are we on next then, Tom? Pull these ones back. This one. This whole thing. The whole, the whole thing, both sides. Yep. So we're grabbing both sides, and we're going to give that a... Okay, so we'll just get it loose there, yeah. Okay, and that's as far as we can get it for now, is it? 
Yeah. Pull it clear of this piece here now. Okay, lift that over the bottom, okay. And then you can drop the steering wheel. We'll drop the steering wheel now, okay. So I'll release the lever under here. Just let that come down, okay. And then we've got to take that cowling off now. Pull that one back. You can move it up and down, down. and around. Okay. Um, but we still haven't got clearance. We've got, we've got visibility now of the two babies we need to get to. So we've got one and their Torx T31 there and this one here. So they're the bad boys we're trying to get to. But I think Tom said he could, could we, we take this top cover off. Top this top sort of cowling off the um, in the uh, stalk assembly here, and that'll give us even better access to those two. Now the workshop manual, incidentally, tells you you've got to take your airbag off, your steering wheel off, the steering, drop the steering column in. So this is the sort of unofficial way, if you like. Now should we get the plastic tool in there, Dragon Top? Yeah, or you can spring it. Um, so we need to just lever off this, separate these two. There we go. And if you wriggle it a little bit, you should be able to pop we should it better just pop slide it. it back up. Okay, so we're gonna extract that. So yeah, if you sort of scoop it out and round like that, you can just wiggle that. Um, so this has just got these, this literally just clamps together, these are the receptacles and I guess the spring bits are on the other half of the uh, assembly there. But we've managed to get this apart, we've already, Tom's already had this apart once and put it all back together and, and nothing broke during the process so we're, we're fairly confident this is the if best way. In there then, you'll see yep. this little there. If you hook that in under there, it'll sit there quite happily. Okay, so we've got that. So we've got this this sort of frame that sits around the steering column now. By removing that top cowling, we've enabled that to come down, and then we can access. If I look from the front here, because I'm sort of in the way of the video, we're going to access these two screws here now. We'll get the T. Now Tom's managed to, in our extensive tool collection, no, I'm being sarcastic. Um, we've got this little wobbly drive here. And that gives you just a little bit of a better angle where we're still reaching over the top of that other one to get in there. Okay, here we go. It's all happening. Well, there is an option to come in from underneath that plastic glass. If you, wish to. Yep. If you pop it loose under oh. your screws and put it back, depending on how access is going yeah, yeah. to it. But that seemed to work pretty well. And those Torx drives, you get a lot of grip with those Torx drives, even at a bit of an angle, you don't. Um, right, so that's the uh, that's the screw there. It's got a pretty coarse thread on that one. It's got the, the washer's integral, so he's not going to fall off. That's one of those. Right, and then let's go for this other one. I've seen on uh, eBay and stuff that Lockwood Instruments do uh, the dial kits for these in magnolia and white. Oh, there's me saying it was easy, Tom. I'm struggling this, so with this one. Right? from underneath then, just Go. to show the difference. Mm -hmm. right. so pop it out of the... Ah, the okay. It'll sneak in around the back. Yeah. Okay. And then once it's finger tight, you can put that yeah. down again. Yeah, down again, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's got it. I don't know, yeah, if everyone can see that, we've sort of come in from the side. Okay, let me have let me drop that down again. And I can either drive it with this now it's loose or as Tom says you might get away with with taking the bit off and spinning it by hand. Is that kind of the idea you have, Tom? Well, I'll, I'll just spin the driver on in the end of the flexi extension as well. Getting that angle on that. You may have to go in from underneath, underneath again. Yeah, I was, I was a little bit ahead of myself there. I turned it and I thought I had it finger loose. Right, let's go in again. Lift that up. Give him a few more turns. 
these are easy enough to get line up and get back in, are they, Tom? Yeah. Ones? yeah. And they've got a fairly coarse thread, so you're not like going to cross thread them very easily. Uh, uh, okay, that's it. Yeah, and I'm just spinning on. Oh, okay, right. I'm gonna, that's some danger of dropping him. But let's have a quick go. Luckily, we got the washer to hold on to. So, yep, there's the uh, second one of those. Out. Okay. So now we should better keep that out of the way. And we've now got now Tom saying that it, it's actually located on two like dogs up at the top, right? So we need to. Pull it down gently. Pull it no. from the bottom. It, use it like a cat flap, yeah? yeah? Pull it like a cat flap. So we're trying to get on these white bits under here. Okay, yeah. Okay, and he rocks down then, doesn't yeah. he? And, and then, then you have to sort of be a little careful and rock it and slide it out towards the door. Okay, so let's give that a go. And we've got connections on the back of here, obviously. So we, we want to watch. On, and I've done these on cars before. You've got to be careful not to scratch that front that front lens. So do you reckon the top one's come forward, Tom? Is that how you do it? You bring it all the way forward to as far as you can. He's just and caught. gently slight rock it. He's just caught on a bit of the lever there. There we go. Right. And again, watch that front face. And then, here we go. Right, do you reckon it's a good time to whip that connector off, Tom? Or? A little bit more if you want. A little bit more if we want. Right then. Ooh. Hey, look at that. Right then. So, Hopefully uh, you saw that. So I think we've got to push in that little bit there and then we, it's like the old BMW connectors, is it Tom? I haven't done that one. No, we haven't done this one yet, but right, it looks to me that we've got to push that bit in. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Oh, we've got a cable tie around here that looks a bit suspicious. Let's just, and then, it looks like that one's to, it looks like it's those BMW ones that, that rock. That's it. That. There we go. Look at that. Right, we're on new territory because Tom didn't want to make my car not work again. So we've just done that. Okay. So there we have it. One uh, instrument cluster removed from a uh, Range Rover Sport. Um, hope that helps.